I am the great Gonzo. Welcome to I Love Muppets, an hour in the company of your favorite pigs, frogs, dancing cheeses, lobster banditos, and, uh, um, uh, things from the hallowed stage of the Muppet Theater. Gonzo. Uh, hmm? Pepe, Pepe, this is I Love Muppets. You just wandered right into a BBC television show. The BBC? Yes. This means I get paid, okay? Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Meanwhile, on with the show. They were so adorable, and you just couldn't help but love them. It's time to play the music. It's time to light the light. You know, everybody was very proud to be part of it. It's time to put on makeup. It was a joyful time. And the Muppets made it that joyful. It's time to raise the curtain on the Muppet Show tonight. And the Muppet Show just went out to entertain, full stop. It was huge. The Muppet Show was huge. But now let's get me started. When I look in the mirror, the first person I see is Miss Piggy every day. <laughs> Why don't you get me started? When I got asked to do it, I immediately said, yeah. It's time to get things started on the most sensational, inspirational, celebrational, motivational. This is what we call the Muppet Show! <laughs> the Muppet Show ran on British TV from 1976 to 1981 and transformed Sundays for a generation yet to discover the joys of rollerblading, PlayStation, and Sunday shopping. One half variety extravaganza, one half menagerie, and another half everything else. The Muppet Show was presented each week from the stage, backstage, and even dressing rooms of the Muppet Theater. Presided over by Kermit the Frog and his would-be paramour, Miss Piggy, the show gave us guest stars like James Coburn, Debbie Harry, Julie Andrews, and Alice Cooper. I should live so long. There's no business like show business. The Muppet Show was a true variety show with a heady mixture of songs, skits, and dances. It was a traditional variety show like the good old days, except with fur. They took a loving look at the old vaudeville days. The part shall be played by moi. And while using it as a route, went on from there. Yes, yeah, it's rough out there. You know, it's a very strange audience. I'm sorry about that. It included anarchy. <laughs> This was a company trying to put on the show with everything against it. Pardon me, I shall nurse you back to health if it takes a lifetime. Oh. What do you think's oh. wrong with him, Dr. Oh. Bob? Well, for one thing, he's been badly exposed oh. to overacting. <laughs> Either that or overexposed to bad acting. Oh. <laughs> There's one thing that always sort of thought was strange. Ah. The Muppets right that get maimed, bashed and beaten up. Muppets are always getting thrown about. Yes. They never seem to get hurt. Give that pig first aid. Oh, oh, am I better? It was anarchy, vaudeville, and damn good show business. Good television. Let's go! This may be the 25th anniversary of The Muppet Show, but The Muppets made their debut in America back in the 1950s. Mm, this was before my time, okay? Uh, my too. Jim Henson was a young man with a dream who formed the company of Muppets way back in the 1950s. Hello there, my name is Jim Henson and I'm a puppeteer. And I'm called a puppeteer because I work with puppets and my own act my puppet act is called the Muppets. Yeah, it has a very different look to it. It moves, see, like this. Oh, cool, you pop it up and up and up and up. Shaboom, boom. Gee, I see. Sesame Street. You know, like open sesame? It kind of gives the idea of a street where neat stuff happens. Kermit, why, you're a genius. Mwah. Little did he know it, but Kermit was about to find his biggest role yet as a roving reporter on a new TV show, Sesame Street. Sesame Street. 
Timothy Frog speaking to you from the planet Coosbane. There's a hush in the air. This is the traditional time of courtship of the Coosbanian creatures. Galio! Once again, love comes to Coosbane. Sesame Street was the first educational show for children that talked to them and not at them. You're you're just teasing me. W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, Cookie Monster. Next time, Cookie Monster can do it with you. I'm leaving. I love you, too. Thanks. It was certainly the first show with a cookie monster. Cookie, 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 start with C. Yeah! I don't want to play a game with rhymes. Nice going, Bert. Oh, ring my chime. I don't want to do it. There's really nothing to it. It's so silly. A boy named Billy. Sesame Street was a huge success, but Jim wanted us to do something bigger, to do our own Muppet show. And although we Muppets are from America, the Muppet Show was actually taped right here in Britain. Come on. It's true. Uh, it doesn't seem fair, okay? We brought them the Muppet Show, and they sent us in Robinson, okay? In the Navy, in the Navy. Cut. Jim, for years, tried to get the Muppet Show, as you know it, and we all know it, onto American television. And no company in America would take it on. <laughs> With America closing its doors, Jim turned to Britain and found TV entrepreneur Lou Gray to share his dream. It was a struggle for him initially to, to get it going, and he had to do a couple of pilots, and, and they were rejected by all the American networks. And it wasn't until Lou Gray invited my father and the Muppets over to London. The Muppet Show launched. Stop there. What? I'm sorry, Stevie went too hard. The very fact that the Muppets were turned down by American broadcasters meant that Lou Grade would be taking a risk with it. But then, in those days, Lou Grade didn't mind taking risks. I own the theater, the ground it stands on, and the mineral rights underneath it. In fact, I probably own you too, Frog. Lou Grade must have known he was onto a good thing. I mean, look at what he was watching on TV. Pre-1976, children's television programs. Back push. Think a mouse. Think a mouse. But never stop to think a mouse. And then the clangers. <laughs> On Orville and Cuddles. Cuddles says, I, I look like a narrow with wings. Can't stand the dog. <laughs> Zippy and George from Rainbow. Jeffy, Jeffy, Zippy won't let me play with any of the toys. I'm sure he will. We are older than the Muppet. We showed them how to be funny. <laughs> did I pave the way? Well, possibly. It would be nice to think I did. Does anyone remember um, Trevor and his magic duvet? Do a Trevor and his magic duvet. Trevor and, and his magic... Do a Trevor and his magic duvet. You do. Uh, no, Zig, that was never on TV yet. That was a show in your own tiny mind. Oh. The Pink Wafer Biscuit Show? Again. Pink Wafer... Again. Your own tiny mind. Britain in 1976. A country waiting for fun. Drought strikes and punks on top of the pops. It was great. But not so great if you were watching Tea Time TV. But with the first episode of The Muppet Show in September, there was light at the end of the tunnel. The Muppet Show was the first thing that I remember being excited that it was coming on. As soon as that was on on a Sunday night, it was like the best night of the week to be watching the TV. It's time to play the music! It's time to play the music! It's like you don't remember any woman until you the woman you that you first fell in love with. It's like after that, after you meet her, you just forget all the others. Soon for the handsome frog here to make another one of his introductions. I will check myself and see how I look in the mirror. Kermit was the star of the show. After all, he did run it. <laughs> 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 
His job was to keep the show afloat and our heads above water. Well, my role on The Muppet Show was to host the show and just sort of keep things moving and basically make sure that no guest stars were injured or abused in the making of each episode. You've done it all. The Bouncing Marcelino Brothers! Yeah! <laughs> What's on me if I'm doing this? William, tell act on stage, you guys. Come on, move it, move it, move it. You, you don't shout, it makes me nervous. He's the consummate professional. I think he picked up a few tips from me along the way, though, I have to say. <laughs> oh, that pulled down that way? I don't think so. He's captaining the ship, if you like, of, of, of lunatics. Uncle Kermit, Uncle Kermit! Just one second, Robin, one thing at a time. That's how I'm able to put on this show without falling into a panic. He's kind of the sun, and everybody kind of revolves around Kermit. Sometimes it's very difficult. He was the center of gravity of the whole trip. He's a frog! Yes! Kermit, you've really been busy since I saw you last. Oh, yeah, we've been doing this show and all that stuff. Oh, and I love the shows. I watch them every week. Oh, okay, he was a gentle soul, yeah, and one felt that he understood everything, that uh, you only had to tell Kermit your problems. I mean, it, one certainly didn't need a psychiatrist with Kermit around. Oh, no. What am I going to do? Hi, Kermit. What's happening? Oh, Gonzo, haven't you heard the news? No. Well, Scooter's uncle's going to tear this theater down. No. Yes. But for Kermit, the linchpin is he is legitimately affectionate towards all the people he works with, all the characters. Somebody tell those kids to knock it off! 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 Now, will we knock off the knocking it off? Knock off the knocking it off! Knock off the knocking it off! Knock off the knocking it off! Only what the truth was. And oftentimes they didn't believe that, you know. So they, oh, what's that frog now? Refresh my memory. Uh, was there a cow in that opening number? No. Then what's the cow doing backstage? And Kermit would all of a sudden get upset and explode. I will not stand around while you do dumb things like that, Piggy. You have done that to me too many times, Piggy. I will not stand for it. I will not stand for it. What are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Piggy. I'm going to fire you. Piggy, you are fired. You are fired, Piggy. You are fired. Fired. Kermit's life turned a corner when a certain pig with style, flair, and a powerful left hook entered his life. Dios me, a pig and a frog. This is weird, okay? Only girl, the one and only girl in the world. <laughs> when I look in the mirror, the first person I see is Miss Piggy every day. Take the ribbon from your hair. Shake it loose, let it fall. What a slut she was. Laying soft against my skin. I found Miss Piggy quite sexy, I have to be honest. The kind of girl you wouldn't want to bring home to mom, but dateable. Take it! <laughs> Help me make it through the night. Big, voluptuous, yeah. Honey, honey, honey. Care who's right or wrong. I don't try to understand. She's the prima donna par excellence. Well, Miss Piggy is a little insane, you know, and will get you. She was a flirt. She was a total flirt. Lord, tonight I need a friend. She can't sing. <laughs> Ruffy? Ruffy, that's too high. She's very catty. Look, Skywalker. Go along with this or I'll cut you in half. <laughs> look, it's the princess. <laughs> Quite a squalid little rat. Doesn't look like a princess to me. Watch it, hardware. She's got a very, very sharp tongue. She was so pompous and so full of herself. And tonight's question is one that has bothered scholars everywhere. Was William Shakespeare, in fact, bacon? No! <laughs> is this some kind of bad joke? I, I don't understand, Vicky. Bacon, my love, bacon! What she has is bravado and style. That's what she has. Miss Piggy started out in the Muppet Show chorus line, but with a much deeper voice and none of the airs and graces she was later famous for. Oh, what's wrong? I mean, I'm the guest star on the show. Nobody seems to notice. The audience is filled with big fans. Miss Piggy was just a pig. I think at one point they needed a bunch of pigs. My 
Step Brother is really something. He's got girls eating out of his hand. Oh? Is he a lover? No, a waiter. Oh. We just um, grabbed a pig character in this week and put a wig on her. Yes, he's driving us bananas. And then Frank took her on and, and she developed into this huge superstar. She started as a chorus pig, but she soon took center stage and she never gave it back. She was like your classic starlet, saw herself as uh, the star of the show and an expert in martial arts. We don't have to go back to the swamp. We can, uh, we can go to back where to where to where you were born, the sty. You know, where your roots are, where pigs eat swill and wallow in the mud. There was one show where we had a rehearsal. It was supposed to be Piggy hitting Kermit. And for some unknown reason, I don't know why, I was doing her at the time, and I karate chopped him. She was a lady, and then she turned into anything but a lady. You don't want to cross her, because she'll, she'll knock you out. Kermit always knew that she was too aggressive. I don't think I laughed when that happened. I think I'd go, oh, God, Kermit, you OK? He wouldn't know what hit him, apart from that big porky fist. Yeah. It's a serious matter, isn't it? I wouldn't be surprised if you don't have seen Kermit silhouette, you know, in Kilroy, like talking about uh, knocking him about and that. It's not funny. <laughs> Miss Piggy was now an international superstar with interviewers clamoring to talk to her. Yeah, the most beautiful, beautiful creature that I've ever set eyes on. I really mean it. I am madly, madly. Would you welcome Miss Piggy? You know, I remember her being interviewed on Parkinson. So she was obviously um, hit, it with, hit it off with so many people. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have such deep blue eyes. Yes, and you have. Bedroom eyes. <laughs> she was just impossible, Miss Piggy. You know, just thought she was the only blonde in town. Could I, could I stroke your hair? <laughs> Don't stop there. <laughs> it's that Marilyn Monroe thing. You keep going and she keeps going until you're bad and she's fabulous and they say cut. <laughs> What's it like being a sex symbol? Oh, it's a, it's a deep responsibility to be... <laughs> To be a taste setter in fashion, nice. to be a sex symbol and a, a pig superstar. She was a celebrity, you know, she knew what she was, you know, and she wanted to be more of it, more of it. Hello, Annabelle. You look so beautiful today. Of course I do. <clears throat> now, what'll it be? One Weight Watchers special? She is three times harder than she needs to be because she's three times more insecure. Like all divas, she's deeply, deeply insecure. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, excuse me. Oh, well, that's all right, Ma. I just misjudged the size of your snout. <laughs> Everything from Piggy comes from pain. And in her heart, also what's happening is she has one magnificent obsession, and it's this frog. And uh, he is not, he's not helping her out. Every time you yell, it sends a shudder through my body. I think there was an on-off sort of love, love hope relationship with Kermit. You must know how much I love you. Oh, it has happened. Oh, my Kermit has admitted his love for me at last. Frank developed the idea that Miss Piggy has a little bit of a crush on Kermit that then made that character so funny. Have we ever shouted to him? Will you get out of here? <laughs> Me. A frog and a pig. Oh, now that's weird. Hey, Miss Piggy is, is, is she's she's looking for love in all the green places. I just love children and they adore me. I don't believe this. Miss Piggy always knew that he really loves me. That he's just a little too shy. So I'm gonna have to make all the advances. Oh, light of my life, frog of my arms. Miss Piggy would kind of get jealous of Kermy, whenever um. You know, there was a girl on the show. Your eyes are like two limpid pools. Oh, that's very sweet. Kermit. And when I look into your eyes, I see... I see... <laughs> Come on, tell me what you see. I see trouble. <laughs> I could kind of flirt with Kermit, and Miss Piggy would get jealous. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well! Why, the 
the pigs away, the frog will play. <laughs> oh, we did a little kissing, a little carrying on. <laughs> it's very sexy. I hope they get married. It's really getting tiring. I'm in a nice bit of trouble, I must confess. Somebody with me has had a game. The children, you know, that I would worry about. I don't know what they might come out to be. Can't get away. Spog. To marry you today. A prog. My wife. A fig. I have no idea. Won't let me. Very good, Jamie. Uh, thank you, but it's just a song. You know, I don't have a wife. Mm -hmm, not yet. They're basically married. What's the difference? It's just a piece of paper, so come on, Carmen. Can't get away. To marry you today. My wife won't let me. There's nothing wrong with interspecies relationships. Now, will you take a silly pillow out from under your dress? I like it! Kissy, kissy, kissy! Don't it make you sick? <laughs> Next, we would like to take... Oh, boy, darn coffee. Oh, Bobo, come on up here. What? Come on. Oh, what I've got it? a great introduction. You'll be perfect because Oh, it's, come it's on, no, I can't, I can't do that. I'll do it. <clears throat> All right, okay. Uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, one of the finest comedians in show business... Mr. Fozzie Bear, I rushed it. No, it was good. I think I can do it. Hi, diddly dee, an actor's life for me. A high silk hat and a silver cane. A watch of gold with a diamond chain. Ah! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you. Mwah. Waka, waka, waka. Ah! ah, the bear is funny. Now, tonight, I'm going to try and put something new in my act. Yeah. Like comedy, maybe. <laughs> Hi. Okay. What happens now? Oh, well, now comes the funny part. Kermit needed a second banana, and so Jim well, thought of this bear. I get Kermit. Oh, hi there, Fuzzy. Hey, hi. listen, uh, you better go get ready. The useless stand-up comedian that Kermit would just keep saying, come on, go out there, you can try, come on, you, it'll work. I knew a frog who got so tired he fell asleep during his nap. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but he was rubbish, wasn't he? No, no, dude, he was just silly. I knew a minister once who was so religious, when he read the Bible, he wore stained glasses. Always well-meaning, but always getting it wrong, bless him. Oh, I can see you're all in a great mood tonight. Well, why ruin it with your act? <laughs> I learned to handle hecklers by working in a nightclub so tough, the hatchet girl was a gorilla. <laughs> There were more people in the band than in the audience, and we had a one-man band. I don't know how he got booked, but he was useless. Impressions, huh? Yeah, we'd like to see an impression of a bear leaving a stage. <laughs> I could bear you guys with one line. Okay, what's the line? Uh, uh, you, you, you just wait. Is that the line? <laughs> the thing about poor old Fozzie was people laughed at him, not with him. The way the people laughed at me it made me feel a clown. What he lacks in good material, he more than makes up in perseverance. Oh, Kermit, 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 I am really gonna get him tonight. Get who? Hmm? Oh, Staten and Waldorf. You know those two old guys who sit in a box and heckle me every night? Mm -hmm. Well, tonight, I am ready for him. He will face the storm of, of, of those two old men, and he will never, ever give up. He will always strive to be funny. Uh, go for the jugular vein. There, go right in. Right there. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, hey, is that a suit you're wearing? It's a nice one, yeah, but won't your wife notice the hole in the living room rug? Uh, that's good, now you're rolling, go in for the kill, oh, go in for okay. the kill. Hey, that's some nose you got there, Buster. Why don't you rent yourself out as an anteater? <laughs> I like it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or a head. Quick over your head. You call that a head? I've seen better heads on cabbages. <laughs> oh. oh, he's burying me. He's burying me. You know, we could never understand why those two old guys, Statler and Waldorf, showed up for every single show. Oh, no. Enough. Enough. We surrender. We surrender. No more. No more. They hated everything. Statler, you must be the old fool there's no fool like. If they thought the show was so bad, then why did they come back every week? That's true. What was that? <laughs> that was very strange. It was very weird. It was peculiar. It was kind of amusing. Yes, it was rather funny. It was incredibly funny. I loved it. Hilarious! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. They just heckled, didn't they? they? They were the grumpy old man, weren't they? Well, I didn't think I'd live to see it, but for once they've given us something other than second-rate entertainment. What's that? Third-rate entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> 
Fozzie Bear took the worst of Statler and Waldorf's abuse, but it took me, the Great Gonzo, to really shut them up. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the Great Gonzo! <laughs> there, that was easy, wasn't it? I am strolling down memory lane without a single thing to remember. Gonzo is an artist. He's always at the cutting edge, which can be pretty painful if you're being shot out of a cannon. Some folks remember their mother. A great Gonzo. And others, their girlfriends behind. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening I will perform a feat of lunatic daring. Gonzo was always doing. Uh, crazy stunts. No. Oh. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, I will once again defy death and good taste. Gonzo was a, was a connoisseur of pain. And, uh, and, and I think that's why he did these outlandish acts. If there was an opportunity to get hurt, he's a happy guy. Look, pull, help me pull up with the lever. Oh, this lever over here. Oh, here is lever. Sad? Whew, I know sad. But you do what you can with the things that you see to make life a jamboree. Guns all the great! Oh, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I will eat this rubber tire to the music of the flight of the bumblebee. In those days, I always thought of Gonzo as somebody who was a master of inappropriate behavior. And uh, I think it made me feel more secure when I was performing with him, um, knowing that uh, if he did something that was inappropriate, it wasn't my fault, it was Gonzo's fault. Some people give up, some people get out, but me. I'm a jamboree! Yeah. I've noticed that I haven't been on, uh, on stage for the last couple of shows. I think Gonzo yeah. is a type of Darius character from Pop Stars. However much he's rejected, he'll always come back and fight another day. Uh, Gonzo, I have seen you eat a rubber tire to music, and I've seen you play a concert on your head with a mallet. Yeah. And Gonzo, my dear friend, it doesn't work. There is the drag, see how it goes. Down on the heels, up on the toes. That's the way to do the first Thank you, thank you, love you, mwah, love you. The Muppet Show always had its fair share of freaks. Slack-jawed, low-down, nasty, and weird characters. Uh, like my friend Gonzo here. <laughs> Flatterer. Yes. Oh, they don't come much weirder than New Zealand. Like the quickest way out of here! Through the roof! <laughs> but then again, there was Crazy Harry. The Swedish chef, Sweetums, Beaker, the Foobs, Fazoobs, Spineys, Gawky Birds, Clodhoppers, Mutations, Kuzbanians, and Rizzo. Don't you think it's just a little over the top? I wonder if it hurts those little guys. Oh, I know how to find out. Hey, don't even think about it, okay? Okay. We may have fought like animal and octopi on stage, but off stage we were the best of pals. We kept it professional. Don't look, don't look. I don't like where those people are putting their hands, okay? For me, the, the strange thing was, because I'd worked as an actress, was putting it into my hand. If you give like a ukulele, ukulele lady. And then you be on that, you have to make this piece of felt come alive, and that's the magic of it. You like me, like I like you, and we both. Pig is the most difficult character to perform. 
besides physically it's difficult, but also I've got to reach down to that feminine part of myself and bring up all those feelings that men don't usually have. One of the criterion was that you had to be a bit mad and get on with everyone. Because <laughs> one of the things is it's very, very physically close. And I would be doing, for instance, Fozzie Bear's right hand, and you're wrapped around each other, and it's quite intimate. So you had to just get on with each other and not smell as well was quite important. Six feet wide, so there was a wonderful time in the John Denver show. All the puppeteers were locked in this bed for hours. Someone was very squeamish, so it involved, I think probably Frank, because Frank can be quite evil, just going on about nasty squeamish body parts, body fluids, all that kind of thing, on and on and on, and there was no escape. After all, I am an important bear. Uh, I, I am capable... It's very difficult, performing Muppets. You have to work on character and voice. There's, I mean, there's tons and tons of stuff to think about. And, of course, you're underneath all the time, laying down or standing up. But what makes it fun, and always made it fun, was number one, Jim, and also the people the Jim hired, uh, all the terrific performers. You know, we're like brothers and sisters. That's the fun. When Jim and Frank performed in front of the Muppet Show uh, crew, the crew was highly entertained. Well, did you know, Fozzie, that wherever the Muppet Show is screened outside of England and America, the bear speaks the language of that country? I mean, I do? I, I speak the language of that country? Well, it's fascinating. It was hysterical to see how they do it in such a genius type of way. Another bear speaks for me? <laughs> well, so to speak, yes. Uh, he's not as funny as I am, huh? <laughs> well, sometimes he's funnier. <laughs> he's funnier? We were very different, Jim and I. And as much as I can do crazy characters like Animal and Piggy and, you know, insane characters like Marvin Suggs. Kermit was more at peace with himself, as was Jim. And Piggy was much more neurotic, as was I at that time. And so you can't do these characters without bringing a piece of yourself. Happy feet, I've got those happy feet. Give them a low-down beat, and they begin dancing. Oh, Kermit, how could you have forgotten? Oh, I didn't forget. One believed absolutely that one was talking to Kermit. Well, Julie, it's very nice to be able to talk quietly with you for a minute. Thank you, Kermit. I feel the same way. You know, there's something I was going to ask you. Hey, excuse me, Julie. Hey, Kermit, yeah. your nephew Robin just fell in a tuba. He did what? He fell in a tuba, but it's okay. Animals getting him out. I, I forgot that Jim Henson was actually working this wonderful puppet. Oh, it must be great to be a rock star. Oh, would you like to be a rock star? <laughs> they had such personality. I said, you know what would be funnier, Kermit, would be, like, if I moved over here and... You know what would be funnier, Kermit? I said I wanted to be a rock star. I was just sort of half kidding. I mean, oh, I'd like to be an astronaut, too. Well, then just cross out the word rock star and write an astronaut. <laughs> I don't think I want anything to do with you. <laughs> well, it looks like you're stuck with it, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm literally talking to a hand. And he's going, oh, yeah, really? Oh, okay, well, that's a good idea, you know? <laughs> One day, when I said to Frank, uh, do you mind moving Piggy to your left? And Piggy said, are you talking to moi? And I went, sorry, Miss Piggy, yeah. And the minute the hand was up in the air, then it was Miss Piggy you had to speak to. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, there goes the running order. Now, how do I know which act is next? When in doubt, go with a star. What's that? Coat of arm. Roger, I'm so glad you asked me up here. Well, actually, I didn't ask. The Muppet Show has always prided itself on attracting the cream of guest stars. It's great to be here. We skin them right off the top, okay? <laughs> there was Mark Hamill, Julie Andrews, Peter Sellers, Chris Langham. Chris Langham? Yeah. The cream of the guest stars? Well, sure. Okay. Well, we did have 120 shows to fill. Sometimes we got desperate. Uh, uh, quick, Chris, uh, what do you do? What have you got? The Muppets managed to call up the greatest stars in the world. Uh, 15 seconds to curtain, Miss Andrews. Thank you. <laughs> 
every week. A new one would show up, a new one would get delivered. Listen, any more talk like that and I will play. And I got to meet just heroes of mine. <laughs> <laughs> the guys in bands were envious. You did the Muppet Show? Yeah, I said, yeah. I said, you gotta be somebody to be the Muppet Show. Freakles one, civilization zero. Now <laughs> uh, listen, I need to hire a bunch of spies for a closing number. Mm -hmm. How fast can you get here? <laughs> Roger Moore was on it, so they'd do a cod sort of James Bond thing. <laughs> Everyone pretended to be a superhero when they had Linda Carter on. Linda Carter, <gasps> Wonder Woman. Well, is that kind of thing going to be going on throughout this entire show? Oh. I don't think there was a single guest who ever said no. When I need love, I hold out. When they asked me, I have the tribute finally is here. The Royal Command. I am on the Muppets. I, I loved working with the guest stars. Every one of them had a great sense of humor, which helps when you're dealing with a room full of frogs, pigs, chickens, and bears. Animals on the loose! Animals oh, on the loose! Get them, Rizzo! Oh, good grief. It's James Coburn! First doing, I thought, oh, well, this is going to be strange. What is it, Kermit? Are you having problems? Working with a bunch of stuffed animals here. No, no, no. Actually, everything's right under control, sir. Yes. I was a bad guy. A gangster, you know, I played those guys. Animal. Animal. Come here. Listen, there's right ways and wrong ways to handle aggression. If you don't want to bust a chair up like that. Bust it up like that. That was something that we kind of worked out together. How about moving from aggressive to calm? My kind of guy. Bring animal back into a kind of a human state, or not a human state necessarily, but at least less aggressive. Relax now. Control. We talked about uh, Buddhism and Zen and that sort of thing. I guess that's simple. That's where it came from. They probably invented a character around that. Going down through your body and coming out your toes. The stars of the show were the Muppets, but it's how, how people related to them because that was what the show was about. It's truly a magical kind of set to be on. Well, I certainly can't beat them. And to be part of it was being part of the magic. Bring your partners to and fro, all joining with an all sort of. You know, all of our guest stars were so great. They were always willing to do anything we wanted them to do. Uh, uh, and behalf of all the Muppets, I wish to apologize to each and every one of them for any damage we may have caused to them or their careers. Yeah, I've got a message here from uh, Benny Brillstein, the Yiddish yodeler. Uh, uh, that's tonight's guest star. Uh, it says, uh, oh no, I'm not, and you can't make me. <laughs> Oh, but this is terrible. What will we do for a guest star? Uh, no one here but me and this turkey. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 what's your name? Uh, Langham. Chris Langham. Mm -hmm. uh, you want a job? I don't believe it. He's going to book the turkey. When they were doing the first series, Jim asked John Cleese if he knew of any good English writers, and John had said, no, but there is this guy who's really cheap. Uh, so I came on board during the first year. Where do I start? I didn't uh, well, become a guest for any other reason than that uh, Richard Pryor blew himself up freebasing. Well, here it is, the opening number. A lot of the people we worked with were big stars and they were used to being quite demanding. Chris Langham, he's on next. The messenger? He's not a messenger anymore. He's a guest star and he's up in his room putting together an act. Oh, right. So when Let's I was actually it, asked man. to be in it, all of the resentment that had built up over the years towards guest stars was at last allowed to be released. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes a performer comes along who needs no introduction. This is not one of those times. I mean, what can I tell you? This guy's a great guy, he's a hard worker, he's a good messenger, and here he is to do whatever he's going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Langham! Yay! 
And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. And there it goes. You know, if you ever think about it, there are these strange pauses in this show when nothing happens on stage. Let's not think about it. <laughs> Before there was MTV, music television, there was MMTV, Muppet Music Television. If you wanted to see the hottest musicians, you'd usually find them right here on our stage. Debbie Harry, Elton John, Leo Sayer, Kenny Rogers, and of course, my personal favorite, Angus McGonagall, the gargling Argyle Gargoyle. <laughs> So much fun Holding hands and skimming stones I don't know those shit At that time, glam rock was very big Glam rock and stop the shock And when you feel It was a very sort of topical show, actually, when you think about it Yeah Head of its time Do me a better time And I guess I never will Everything was really glamorous And, oh, everybody loved rock stars People who were huge at the time. At the time. One way or another, I'm gonna find ya. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you one way or another. I'm it was a pretty exciting experience. I'll get you, I'll get you, you can't just sort of slide through that and, and just not be, you know, thoroughly involved, can you? They uh, took some of the, you know, sort of heavier songs that we did, you know, one way or another, and a uh, call me. Somehow they mix that with the innocence and the the niceness of the of the scout. Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers. certainly did some some extraordinary music. High on a hill was a lonely goat herd. Lady old, lady old, lady old. Loud was the voice of the lonely goat herd. Lady old, lady old, no. Working with the Muppets was a delicious experience because it was like nothing one had ever done before. Oh, lady old, lady old. It was tremendously hip. It was witty. And because of the Muppets, you kind of lost some of your own inhibitions. You became a child, too. You knew you were in safe hands, and so it was easy. And one always had a great, great time. Even these pop stars were pretty tame compared to our very own wild man of rock. Oh, I hope the Muppets like me. Like, love, love, clear land, love. I like to be admired, <laughs> but <laughs> that was a little bit too much. <laughs> Don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. Being who I was, they wanted me to work with the band. You know, it gives me great pleasure to be appearing here with Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem Orchestra. You know, I melt down those gold records and put them in my teeth. He said, and that's put, putting money where your mouth is. And here we have the man on bass guitar, the hippest of the hip, Lloyd Pepper. Yeah, moving and grooving, Cleo. Why, we played from one end of the gap to the other. We played the whole spectrum from over there, way over there. I think maybe Animal was over the top as a drummer. <laughs> I've never encountered one that um, was that uh, outrageous. And way up there on the drums, the ma you know, I'd rather not introduce him. Oh, he won't hurt you, Cleo. We nail his shoes to the bandstand. <laughs> to be a Muppet, I suppose I'd have to be Animal, the, the drummer. Ah! He's the quintessential rock and roll artiste. You know, the kind of out there free spirit who makes Keith Richards look tame. He used to keep bees, you know. Did he? Yes, he, he led a humdrum life. <laughs> Was that a joke? Yeah, only just. Yeah. <laughs> Flying ball of fur behind all these symbols. <laughs> you know, he takes it out to the edge, and then he just... 
pushes a little bit further. Wild thing. I make your heart sing. When they got that character together, I'm sure they were drawing on quite a few, but I think probably Keith Moon. Animal was Keith Moon. He was the Keith Moon of his time, Animal was. Keith Moon? Yeah, Keith Moon from The Who. And I can't tell you how flattered Keith was by Animal. It was just like, it just really, he was just blown away by it. <laughs> Do you remember Fever with Rita Marino? Oh! That was Animal at his drumming best. Yeah. I light up when you call my name Cos you know I'm gonna treat you right To give me fever <laughs> When you kiss me Fever! <laughs> she was finding it really hard to concentrate on the song and you can see her face beginning to crack. Keith Moon is destroyed. I mean, you know what they say, the show must go on. Go on, go on! As a musician, I could identify with the band. Strange that even though they were puppets, I was like, yeah, I'm one of them. I have a room for life at the home for the chronically groovy. <laughs> yeah, they were like a function band, so they would do that sort of, you know, Muzaki stuff in the background. But, but underneath, you could tell that they were all really good musicians. Yeah, we were right on track with each other. No problem with that. When they introduced the saxophonist, Zoot, they say, sax is his axe. And I think that's all you need to know about the Electric Mayhem. I used to have a Muppet Show album. I still have a Muppet Show album, my second one, Muppet Show 2 album. I know I drove my parents mad with it because I had it on tape as a kid and we drove to the south of France, which in those days took about a month, and uh, the tape just went round and round. <laughs> Hey, what does that mean anyway? I have no idea, but it's fun, okay? Yeah, it is. Minerva no, Minerva no, was a key moment in the history of the Muppets. It was just on the show. <laughs> and the next day at school, everybody went round, jumping out next to them and going, Minerva Minerva. No, no. And then you had to reply. Do, 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 do. And a few days later, they brought it out as a single. Hello? OK, just a second. It's for you. You may have noticed that we're not terribly well organized around here, and uh, tonight I'm just barely making it. I don't know. Sometimes it's very difficult. Menomino was a hit in the playground and the charts. Not all of our cast were that successful. It's not easy being green, having to spend each day the color of the leaves. My favorite song of all times will always when be, it's not that easy being it green. It could be nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that. It's not easy being green. It makes me cry. It really does make me cry. I think it's a fantastic song. And green can be cool and friendly like. You can say it's a race thing, you know, except the way you look on the outside, but it's much more than that. Can be big like a mountain, or important, like a river. It's really Kermit's sort of theme song in a way, and um, certainly one identifies the song with him. It's beautiful. 
And I think it's what I want to be Something that's slightly different from uh, Jim Henson's Muppet Show. We've got Jerry Nelson and the story of what goes on halfway down the stairs. Halfway down the stairs was our platinum seller and introduced our youngest cast member, Robin. Halfway down the stairs is a stair where I sit. After we finished the first season, the last things we did was a version of uh, Kermit's nephew Robin singing halfway down the stairs and it had made it up to number seven on the charts that just blew me away so this is the stair where I always stop. one episode Kermit brought his nephew along who was looking after it's beautiful they just thought, let's just put a little a little put a mini Kermit in that out of the blue halfway up the stairs what could be cuter than Kermit a little Kermit it isn't in the nursery, it isn't in the town. It was easy sometimes to get a little homesick working in England. So it was, uh, uh, sort of really touched me in a, in a tender spot when I, when I did that song. And it's always been one of my favorite songs. By 1978, The Muppet Show had Sunday nights sewn up and a movie in production. The whole world was mad about The Muppets. This was the most spectacularly popular show at the time. One of the sort of marketing bits of paper came across my desk, which usually I just throw away, and it said, that we were the number one show in the world. And I suddenly realized I'd landed the job that Hitler was after. <laughs> this is more influence than he ever had. It was huge, and we were like on the A-list of all the London parties. Although the day work was very, very hard and very grueling, we were also getting to do fun things. Jim fought against merchandising. He didn't want to. He thought it was too commercial. Until Bernie Brillstein said to him, you know, if you merchandise, you get money and you can do the cool stuff you want to do. And that's all cared, Jim cared about. So the merchandising turned out to be really helpful. I've definitely grown up with the Muppets. Ever since I can remember, I've always had stuff around of theirs. And I really wanted to meet Jim Henson, so I'd written to ask if they could, I could meet him and if they'd arrange it for me, and nothing ever came. Go on, Michael, then. What is your favourite programme in the whole world? Muppets. And what then, in February in 86, we got a phone call to say that Jim was appearing on breakfast television, and would I like to go on and interview him? Now, now listen, you, you wanted to meet Jim, didn't you? Why did you want to meet Jim? Uh, to say go meet him, Jim. It was just unbelievable to be there. To be sitting on a, a couch with Kermit the Frog at my shoulder and Jim Henson there answering my questions, it was just a daydream almost. It really was remarkable and, and still to this day is the, like the, the best thing I've ever done. I bet you do some impersonations of some of the Muppets, don't you? Is that right? Do you? Yes, but not very good. Well, go on, let's hear them. What's your scooter? Yes, boss. I'm sure you want to do, boss. Yeah, boss. <laughs> wow, it sounds exactly like Scooter. I would swear that I was sitting right here by Scooter. <laughs> Son of a gun. After 120 shows on TV, we had bigger fish to fry with the Muppet Movies. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first screening of the Muppet Movie. There'll be spectacle, there'll be fantasy, there'll be... Now the world knew our name and what we stood for. Bad jokes, great times, and a good heart. Yeah, we're gonna be a movie starring everybody. And me, there'll be heroes, bold, there'll be comedy. Can you help me? I have lost my sense of direction. Uh, have you tried Harry Krishna? 
<laughs> no. They asked me to be in a movie, and I said, a movie with the Muppets? How are you going to do this? They'll be crooks and cops. There'll be villainy. But but I thought they made the transition from the small screen to the big screen with enormous aplomb. It's very difficult to keep coming back with the next Muppet movie, etc. But uh, there's still a lot of life in them yet. Who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on the morning star? So, after five years, The Muppet Show was at an end. But it still lives on with The Muppet Movies and the joy of those who made it and the pleasure of those who watch it. Jim was a kind of gentle, kind of hippie kind of guy. His beliefs did come through in the show. Everyone was kind of involved in that, and you felt, you did feel very honored and special to be part of that. I feel blessed to have uh, been a part of all the productions that I worked with Jim. The thing that I remember most is Jim just laughing and having so much fun while we created these bizarre scenarios. He was a dreamer, and it proves that if you dream big enough and if you're consistent and you have a lot of talent, you really do realize your dream. I used to like to think of Jim as a Pied Piper. He was going to be going and doing these fun things. And if he invited you, he wasn't going to try to push you into it. But if you wanted to come, you were going to have some fun. I think there is an ethos to The Muppet Show, and I think a lot of it is to do with let's laugh at ourselves. The voice might be one and the same. All of us watching and wishing we'd find it. I know you're watching. I think Jim always thought it wasn't just pure entertainment. He wanted to make a difference. <gasps> he had so much in his head that he wanted to do that there was never going to be enough time. Keep believing, keep pretending. We've done just what we set out to do. I love the guys who carried the Beatles instruments. I love Wensleydale cheese. I love sewage treatment plants. I love cosmetic dentistry. I love Chris Terrence Taylor. I love smelly socks. I love Posh and Vex. I love Vex, but I don't care for Posh. I love Posh, but I could do without Vex. I love Joan Collins, but she married somebody else. And of course, I love the great Gonzo. All right, we watch the show. Yeah, unlock the doors. 